so we can get started. Good morning, everyone. It is Ron. It's uh, Sunday morning, and it's time for us to get started, begin our day, and uh, we'll open up with questions, questions or comments. We had an interesting day yesterday, uh, uh, and 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 that is always encouraged. The energy of the day was 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 brought to us through questions, and and uh, I, I enjoyed that. And and, and uh, we want to sort of pick up with that yesterday where we left off. I want to uh, yesterday, the pastor was talking to us about a book that he had read that spoke about Christianity and slavery and. and with, linking those two together. And, and uh, I want to go back to that. I want to uh, talk about that a little bit more because this view of Christianity that we have come to know, we are making an attempt anyway to kind of shed some light on that, the, the falsehood of it and the, 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 uh, the, the beliefs and, and everything that we have come to understand is fed from that uh, lie, if you will, uh, that, that view of God. So we want to kind of talk about that a little more and bring some clarity to it and make sure that everybody understands. So what I'd like to do this morning, if we have no questions and or comments, I want to go back to Acts 11, and I'm going to read verse 26. And Pastor, if you will, I'm going to ask you to kind of sum that verse up and continue with yesterday's discussion, kind of link those two things together, and uh, let's let's see what uh, where that takes us, okay? I'm going to start in verse 25. I'm in Acts 11, uh, verses 25 and 26. So he left for Tarsus and took the, to look for Saul, and he is Barnabas, okay? And when he had found him, he brought him to Antioch. And it came about that for an entire year they met with the church and taught considerable numbers, and the disciples were first called disciples. Excuse me, the disciples were first called Christians in Antioch. So we talked about a church and specifically Christians. Uh, so if you would please, Pastor, help us with that once again, and uh, just just go freely with what, what you see. Um, but um, good morning, everyone. That particular, uh, those particular verses are, are really telling us something totally different than what we've been taught. What we have been taught is that um, the reason we are Christians is because uh, the, we were first called Christians at Antioch. And if you really read those verses as they are written, what we actually see is that the ones who were called Christians are the disciples, the one who was doing the teaching. And if you look at the word called uh, from its original meaning, it, it speaks to the idea of being inspired by a divinity a, a, um, and um, putting all that together. The, the, um, the teachers, the disciples were first, called messiahs at Antioch. They were first, they were inspired, I'm sorry, the people were inspired to call the disciples messiahs at Antioch. And that was the first time that that reference had been made to the disciples. This reference was made, I mean, just, <clears throat> excuse me, this recognition, I should say, uh, of the disciples as messiahs came as a result of them teaching a year. What did they teach? They taught what they had received from Jesus. And what did they receive from Jesus? If Jesus said that he came to rightly interpret the law or the doctrines that, that um, had been handed down from our Creator, then the only thing they had to teach was um, the the understanding of the law, the right interpretation of the law, meaning that what the people had been taught was not um, what was not.
not in line with what had been given by our Creator. So when he, when they taught that, that is when the people called them Messianic. But they were inspired by the Creator to call them that. That means that what they were teaching resonated deeply with the people who were being taught. And their teachings were consistent uh, with the scriptures as well as consistent with the, um, uh, the answers were consistent uh, with the scriptures as well. So that's the best I can do in, in terms of um, explaining that without questions. And if there are questions or comments, please uh, let's hear them. Um, I, I would suppose too that uh, in, the, in my haste to got uh, was, was there a question we had yesterday that didn't? I don't want to call anyone's name in case they changed their mind and did not want to ask the question. But uh, I think there was a question left on the floor yesterday. May have may have uh, may have. Good morning. It. Good morning. It's Janice. How you doing? Hey, Janice. I um my question was um I thought what Pastor explained yesterday was really powerful, and um to kind of fully grasp the idea that Christianity as we know it, um as comforting as it was at one point, the way that you know many of us on the phone have clung to it before, um, understanding where that came from. I'm just kind of wondering what that could mean. I don't know, psychologically or emotionally, like to understand that what you've been taught was definitely not, it was, it's a different level of control than I, I'd really even considered before. And I'm just kind of wondering what that means for us. Um, what, that, what that means for us or what that says to us is, I think it gives us a, a better understanding of the reason why we think the way we think, why we uh, react, uh, interact with each other the way we do, and why we are so confused when it comes to understanding spirituality. But more importantly, it helps us to understand why we worship white people and hate ourselves so much. Our psyche was changed. Um, we were browbeaten and beaten physically into embodying uh, the the concepts of destruction that were given to us. Those concepts that destroyed uh, our self worth. Those concepts uh, that demean us as humans. Uh, those, the concepts that did that are the concepts that we were told uh, were Christian concepts. Um, so it, may, it tells us that we have work to do in terms of uncovering the spiritual essence of who we were created to be. It also tells us uh, that... Um, our psyche needs to be cleansed. And it also tells us that there was an understanding and a fear of what we knew in terms of our relationship with this earth, nature, as well as our relationship with the universe. When, when the... Um, Caucasians observed what could be done through um, meditation, what could be done through contacting ancestors. They immediately began to say that it was of the devil. And from that, they understood if we teach them Christianity, then we will be able to control them 
and that is said in that way in the sermons that were in the pamphlets that were written and delivered by uh, Charles Colcock uh, Jones. So these things um, we have to um, what reverse? Why? Because in our psyche. Um, we 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 are, are confused. We really are. And let me show you how confused we are. If we talk about voodoo, we automatically attribute that to the de- to the devil. And right now, I guarantee you, if I ask you to say to yourself or say it out loud, but you only you can hear it, I believe. That voodoo is real. I believe. Oh, I believe in voodoo. Either one of those phrases, it will make you uncomfortable. Am I right? Because I know you did it. You're right. Anyone else? Yeah, and I actually know what it is, and it's still kind of uncomfortable. Yes. That's what I'm talking about. So with that, especially what you said, Janice, you know what it is, and it's still uncomfortable. So that shows us the depth of, um, not indoctrination, or um, what is that? Uh, I'm looking for a word. That happens. Programming? Huh? Is it programming? Manchurian candidate. Um, oh, the brainwashing? No. Mm. We have been brainwashed. And if you yeah. think... Our brain has been, all of that's true. All of that, yes. Yeah. We have... We are the Manchurians of Christianity. During words, we speak, we feel some kind of way, and we think that is the way we are supposed to respond to the word because of the massive indoctrination that we experience during the time of enslavement. And you say we are not enslaved now, we think freely. The best way to keep someone enslaved is to convince them that they have freedom of thought and movement when you really don't. So uh, those are the things that I see that um, when I talk about what this has done to us and the reason we are where we are now. Uh, also, uh, the, um, the concepts of, um, the, uh, I'm sorry, the deliberate teaching of, of um, the, the uh, negativity of our pre-Christian past all the negative things that are said about what we believed and who we were before we were brought to this country. All of those things have been taught to us in an extremely negative way, even to the extent of uh, looking in the mirror and not liking what you see because of your color. Also, by looking at people and judging them based on the um, characteristics of a European as opposed to the African, even though we know that the first humans in this earth were African. Yet, everything is judged by the European because of this indoctrination. And it causes us to be ashamed of and to move away from our past. We, having been raised with a Christian reality, have been taught that everything that is holy, everything uh, that is divine, is white. We see the white Jesus, we see the white Moses, etc. And I went over this yesterday. Those things are they embed themselves in our psyche, and we subconsciously submit to Caucasians 
as opposed to standing our ground in terms of uh, saying what we believe, saying what we know the truth to be. It makes us uncomfortable to speak the truth in front of white people. And one of the things that was done through Christianity as well, um, after Reconstruction, was everything that a, a enslaved person says, take it back to race. And what happened is, when we start talking about our plight and our history, what, what do we get? Everything don't have to be based on race to the extent that we say it. When we know that everything is based on race, but it's based on how white people see race as opposed to what it really is. Also, um, we, when we look, uh, listen to uh, what's being taught, we see that there is no mention of us, and if it is, it's in a different way. Um, how does that happen? Well, you assassinate a man, and you give him a holiday, and then you rewrite his history. Martin Luther King, Malcolm X. You rewrite the history about them after you assess, uh, give them a, a holiday. Well, Malcolm doesn't have a holiday, but King it does. This also um, causes us to believe that our history started when we landed in the ports of this nation as opposed to going beyond the port and seeing where, where our or, what our origin is and where we originated from. The separation was done by calling us uh, African Americans, Trinidad, uh, Trinidadians, uh, calling them Jamaicans and Haitians, etc., rather than saying that we are Africans in America. We are Africans in Jamaica as opposed to taking on the level I'm taking on the labels that were given to us that were not only uh given by Christianity but was in, in reinforced by Christianity. And the primary re enforcer on the islands of the Christian aspects of um of bondage was given by the Catholic Church primarily on the islands. In this country, it was it, we received it from Protestants. So working hand in hand, Catholics and Protestants gave us Christianity, and that Christianity that we embraced um, destroyed our self-esteem. It robbed us of our history, our language. It robbed us of the, of the essence of our being. And by virtue of taking our language and taking our culture, it is my belief that the reason the Creator allowed this to happen is because we had to we had to flourish in the belly of the beast, the purpose of bringing harmony to humanity. And that is the reason we were the nation that was born. We are the nation that was born on the water. Now, keep in mind that we are we are not all of the nation who was born on water. There were a hundred million Africans or more re re removed from the continent and distributed all over the world. We have a tendency to look at the numbers for America, to look at um, enslavement in America. There were 100 million-plus people stolen from the continent of Africa and distributed as property around the world. reason for this distribution being allowed by our creator is so
so that life could be in all parts of the world and the ancestral um, the ancestral relationships that we have with those who have transitioned before us gives us the opportunity of not only uh, revisiting who we are and embracing it, but also to put the words in the macro so that they will resonate worldwide with all of the Africans who were distributed around the world. When we talk about putting things in the macro, please understand this. When we put things in the macro, it is not us in terms of our physicality, in terms of the sounds of our voices that carries the message on the lips of the wind. It is not us. The wind, the, 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 the words come as a result of spirit because you cannot speak without breath. Breath is spirit. And we also know that the sound that leaves our lips does not end. It's the uh, sound waves simply get further and further apart so we can't hear it. Our ancestors can. The communication with our ancestors has always been there, but we have not been listening because we have been told that that's demonic and, and those are voices that will result in you being uh, in hell for eternity. And now that we are listening, we have what we used to call our ear to the ground. We can hear what's being said, not only by our ancestors, but also by those who seek to destroy us. That is called reading the signs of the time so that we are more equipped to deal with what we are shown by reading the signs of the times and communicating it through our words to those Africans who are not on the phone, who are not uh, are who are not in this nation. Also, it is um, it goes uh, the sounds are also absorbed by Caucasians. And hearts began to change, and they don't know why. The reason is because truth is in the land. Righteousness is flowing like the rivers, and there are no walls between us and white people, us and Africans. The walls that we see there are walls that we have been convinced that they exist when they don't. <clears throat> How in our teaching and our respect for humanity and our love for mankind, regardless of what they did to us, our love transcends those walls. Our love tears those walls down. And I know sometimes it's hard to believe, especially when we talk about the culprit of our enslavement being Christianity, it's hard for us to um, believe that. It's hard for us to wrap our mind around it. But it is real, and the reality of it is seen with the crumbling of of this country and its systems. When we talk about this empire crumbling, the empire cannot crumble unless the uh, system crumbles. And the, the systemic uh, racism and all the other isms that have been supported by Christianity are also falling apart because Christianity is falling apart. The Creator has dec- has seen that there are those who are willing to do whatever it takes to bring truth and righteousness into this earth realm. Therefore, uh, the Creator has begun to allow the churches to crumble. Why? Because they have been traveling in a circle ever since the introduction 
of Christianity for the purpose of enslaving people. And they are crumbling because there is something to be put in the place where it should have been all along. That is not religion. Religion is a made-up term. It is non-existent. Spirituality is the only way to bring harmony, peace, love, and kindness into the earth. And what what spirituality does, spirituality reinstates the principles that were in existence, that were given from the beginning. So when we hear the word voodoo, and there are other terms that are used, we must understand that they are real. And that is the reason they were demonized. And that is the reason every effort was made to destroy them. Yet it was not successful. How is it that my grandmama could say, uh, James, uh, go go down there and, and see how Benny doing. Martha just died. It's 4 o'clock in the morning when she wakes up and says that. So I and my auntie go to, go to uh, Uncle Benny's, and surely enough, a mother did. And that happened numerous of times with her telling us stuff. So where did it come from? It came from the ancestors. When people talked about apparitions in the fields when they were picking cotton, when they talked about directions they were given, given while they were out there hoarding cotton, uh, the, the, the uh, messages that Harriet Tuckman received when she passed out that kept her and her uh, passing is safe. Where did it come from? It came from our ancestors, guiding them from a place of enslavement to a place of refuge. Because it wasn't real freedom, it was refuge. Why did the Creator allow that to happen? Because that history tells us that there is something bigger about the spiritual thing and there is something that is more real than Christianity ever was because it is ritualistic, it is materialistic, and it is anti-humanity. So if there are questions or comments, please raise them. And as I speak, if there are questions during the, during the course of my speaking, uh, I would appreciate it if you would stop me and raise those questions as well. Thank you. I have a question. Uh, first of all, good morning, everybody. Um, yeah, now, so Pastor, so, so can we still do those things? Can we still see those, hear from our ancestors, or can we still have those, um, those that insight, or, or, you know, like you said, you're saying like your grandmother knew that somebody had passed away. Can we still have that type of uh, that insight? Yes, we can. Absolutely we can. <clears throat> the, re- it, the reason we don't have it is because we have shut our soul down and start functioning with our minds. The internal messages that we receive as simple as a policeman down the road that's a message that we should heed. If you heed the messages that you deem to be small or that you um, deem to be secular, then you will be able to hear louder messages that affect mankind in a way that uh, reduces the freedom of humanity. Does that make sense to you? Yes. Okay. Also, Lamont, we we um, have to be still and listen. We are so caught up on our cell phones, our computers, our work, how much money we can make or go, how much money we can save, um, where we're going to travel to. We're so caught up on the things that we can see and the experiences of greed that has been um, and, uh, embedded in us until we don't listen at what is being uh, shown to us. We don't listen. The, des- 
desire to do that must be, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, must be enlarged by you, by, by hearing that you need to shut down and listen, be still. The, the um, idea of, well, at 9 o'clock tonight, I'm going I'm to I'm shut down every single night. The only time you shut down at 9 o'clock to meditate is when you are, uh, are told to. So we do it as a group or when you hear it in your soul. However, you should live in a meditative state all the time. And when you sense that you need to pray, meditate, stop and meditate. Be quiet and listen. Those are the things that begin to develop the the eyesight that is connected with, I'm sorry, the eyesight that comes from the third eye. Those are the things that begin to give us a clearer vision so that we can see what is and what is to be. That insight that my grandmama had did not come from Christianity. It came from her foreparents. It came for, from from mama, her daddy, her grandmama. That's where it came from. It was passed on secretly. What happened is during the course <clears throat> of um, uh, Charles Colcock Jones's uh, teachings, the decision was made to stop Africans from practicing their beliefs. Anyone who was caught practicing voodoo, practicing what they believed, was killed. And the majority of the people who were killed because of the practices that were, uh, that were imported with us from Africa were females. They were princes. That's what they were deemed to be within the confines of uh, the, the enslaved. And as they killed them, what they learned is that the more visible they made the slaughter, the, the less um, the, the uh, practices will be passed on to the next generation. Any questions or comments? Are you grasping what I'm talking about? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Oh. That's just Ron. Uh, you are all over something, and I wanna, I wanna talk about the the the, the journey itself. Uh, you you talked about uh, not just the people on the phone. You you talk about your grandmother, the ancestors, and uh, the, the the making of this journey is under our control. Uh, I, I was reading something in uh, this book that I have that talks about time and how people in the West view time and how important it is. But in the East and in spiritual settings, time doesn't mean as much. It doesn't have that type of value. It is more event. So if if there is a, something that you meditate on, you you look at the event, not how much time it takes, but the event itself is is the measurement of uh, getting the results and how that supersedes time. And I was mentioning I mentioned to you uh, looking at the East and the East not only talks about the front of something, but it talks about the past and present and future of a thing. So tie that in when you, when you start talking about ancestors and, and the journey, what that means. Uh, 
as far as this journey that we're on. Because at some times it seems like a formidable task. And uh, but if we keep the focus and stay spiritual, what does that mean to us? How, how does that fit in? Oh, oh, yeah, you know, I hope you know what I'm trying to ask you. Are you there? I'm just talking. I'm on mute. I'm sorry. Um, okay. The journey. When we speak about the journey, it speaks to the idea of being still. There is no future. There is no past. It's being still because everything is now. If you are looking for the into the past, to uh, enhance your journey, you don't hear what's being told to you now. If you look to the future to find out where we're headed, you don't hear what's being said now. Now, let me explain that further. It's only in Western religious, historical, uh, philosophical thought that there is a fixed past and future. In the Eastern mind, everything is now inclusive of our ancestors. The idea of another world, we have used those terms, and we probably will use them again. However, they are, they are, those terms do not describe what we are talking about, the now. Why? Because there are no other worlds. It's only one world. And the one world exists now. There are different dimensions to the world that we move in and out of, but it's the same world. The idea of of staying spiritual, we don't stay spiritual. We are spiritual. If we have to stay spiritual, that means that uh, we can move, well, I'm tired of being spiritual today, so I'm going to be religious tomorrow, that kind of thing. Spirituality is what it is, cannot be changed, and you are spiritual whether or not you embrace it. It doesn't matter. You cannot change spirituality. You may choose to see with your eyes and feel with your your nervous system it does not mean that spirituality does not exist with you. It's there. To show you how powerful this whole concept of being in the now is, before I say that, let me say this. Being in the now simply speaks of be still and know that I am God. Be still and what? And know that I am God. I am sent you. Tell them that I am sent you. So if you are being still and knowing that I am God, then that means that I am is sending you someplace. And you, the place that I am is sending you it does not have a geographical location. It has a spiritual experience. And if and being still does not mean that we are sitting on the sofa necessarily. Being still means that we are at peace within. We have severed the noise. We have severed the struggles, the battles that's within us. We have come to grips with the, with, with the community that lives in us. And we have embraced that community of thought. And and we have not only embraced it, but we have accepted it for what it is, understanding that those thoughts that lead to what we have labeled as trouble or negativity are not trouble and negativity unless we make them that. Those the, the things, the circumstances that present themselves to us the, the, the way they affect us is determined by how we deal with them. If we deal with them 
with uh, understanding that the purpose for them is to strengthen us, is to encourage us, then our approach to humanity will be the same way. And internally, there are no battles to be fought. So at that point, we are still. And being still opens our spiritual ears to hearing, to experiencing what the Creator is saying to us so that we can travel this spiritual journey with an assurance that we are not traveling alone because the Creator is also always with us, but also we are not traveling alone because we are bringing humanity with us. Why? Because I cannot travel without you. We are one spirit. That is the reason Elohim is one yet many. We are one spirit occupying many bodies. And that spirit travels with us whether you embrace it or not. And that is the reason that we can communicate across country without even realizing it's a spiritual thing. What's up, dog? Uh, No, boss. Stuff like that. Those terms are not communicated uh, through um, memos. They are communicated spiritually. So being still simply means quieting everything within you. Bring it to a place where you embrace it and respect it. Does that make sense? Because there's something else I want to say in regards to that. Ron? Yes, sir. It makes sense. It makes sense. What, what, what I, I, Go ahead. One of the things I'm hearing, see, one of you, you, you we, we get bogged down sometimes, at least I do, when you look at the, the weight of what's going on in the world and, and what's in America. And you think, you know, this has been going on for eons and, 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 and you know, but if, if you don't see it from that perspective, it is the time that bogs you down. It is the time that makes it feel impossible when you look at it from that perspective, because you think, okay, this has been going on forever. How can I fix this out? What can this little handful of people do? But if you don't look at it from a time perspective, and as you said, learning to be still and what that what that means, you know, or through your meditation, you look at it from that perspective and not from a, a, a past or a future, but from the right now, that puts it in a whole different place. Yeah. At least in my mind, it does. It places it in a whole different place as far as uh, where you are in your meditation and uh, how how you see things. So so yeah, thank you. It makes sense. Okay. Um, does that mean that you are not going to act out? the way you have in the past or respond to something the way you have in the past. It doesn't mean that. Keep in mind that Jesus expressed what was embedded in him through religion. When Jesus turned the tables over in the temple, he was turning the tables over physically because it is written that my father's house to be the house of prayer, of meditation. And the house that's, that's, uh, uh, th- that's the house of meditation is you, the individual person. Because the heart of the man is not in the building, it's in the body. The spirit of a man is not in the building. Is in the body. So, so when Jesus turned those tables over, that was a religious response to a religious understanding or belief. The house that's being merch that's being um, offered as merchandise 
if us. We are responding to a shepherd who is actually a howling. And money is being exchanged in the midst of the church in the name of tithe and offering, and none of them know what tithe means. None of them know what offering means spiritually. What's the connection there? So, so if we were going to physically respond as did Jesus, we would turn tables over in the church. And 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 there, the objects have been deified to the point where you can't put anything on the communion table except communion. So the God is the, <clears throat> the communion table and the pulpit. And to become that God, you must have water baptism. That's how you become a part of that God, and then you worship the table by virtue of submitting to it and, and raising it above everything else in that building. And the grounds have been deified and the building deified until it becomes inconvenient. You don't do or say certain things in the building or on the ground. So our response <clears throat> to what we are seeing should not be predicated on what we are seeing with our eyes. It should be seen through the eyes. What am I saying? Everything that that you feel some kind of way about that you see, your third eye is making an effort to interpret it for you. But the anger, the, the discomfort, the discontentment with what's going on, out that I, as well as Silence is the voice that's trying to give us an experience so we will know the reason this is happening and we can see the value in what's going on. When I sit and tell you guys about the elections and stuff and you see it happening, it's because no matter what the talking heads are saying, I, I disregard it. To the extent that <clears throat> I don't even listen to it, very rarely I listen to anything during the course of this lead-up to this election. The only time that I listen to the news is when I heard it, turn the TV on. And each time I saw something, and when I saw it, it either strengthened my resolve to, to uh, wait, and embrace what was to come, or it gave me a message to explain to everyone who would listen, or both. The powerful, I'm sorry, the power that's in meditation is shown by Jesus, and Jesus told us plainly where that power lies. If Jesus said that when you pray, don't pray by the multiplication of words. Prayer is not speaking. Did he not say that? When Jesus said, Jesus was telling them that it is the hypocrite who stands on the corner and prays. The one who who presents itself as being one thing, but it's something totally different. If Jesus went through this to tell the disciples that prayer is not the multiplication of words, when we look at that meaning of prayer, it talks about meditation. Therefore, when the priests were praying with words, they were not abiding by the law. They were not meditating. 
they were seeking. They were seeking the approval of the people. They were seeking popularity. They were seeking prestige. They were seeking uh, for people to bow to them, to see them as being men of God, as opposed to doing what Jesus said. So if Jesus said this much about using about us not using words, then what do you think happened when Jesus went to the mountain to pray and took uh, three of the disciples with him, Peter, James, and John? What, what do you think Jesus did on that mountain? If Jesus had been saying, oh, God, my father, they wouldn't have gone to sleep. Jesus was meditating. Jesus was so deep in the meditation until he did not realize that they were asleep until he came out of it. And when we meditate, we drift to a place of silence. We don't realize how long we've been there, but there comes a time when it feels like the, you are spiritually shaken. You're spiritually awakened by touch. And your eyes open automatically. Does that, that make sense to you guys? So there are questions or comments about it, especially the prayer and meditation. Makes sense to me, yeah. Go ahead. Okay. Yeah, I'm huh? just saying it makes. I'm just saying it makes sense to me. But are, are there any questions or comments, guys? Oh, uh, no. if, if Ron, I got a question. Yes, ma'am. Uh, if Pastor, if Pastor could go back to um, the voodoo, and he may have said it. But I just want to be clear, why do we think it's so bad, the voodoo? Um, I, I, and I, I guess we've been taught that, that voodoo is bad, like the voodoo dolls and all that. Is that part of the the reason we think it's bad or we've always heard bad stuff about voodoo? We, the church taught us it was bad. Christianity taught us it was bad. Christianity tells you what's bad. It doesn't tell you what's good except telling you that Christianity is good. That's why we see voodoo the way we do. That is the reason anything that comes from people of color is demonic. But the the, uh, Christianity uh, that was actually principles of spirituality that were manipulated for the purpose of enslaving the world. That's all that's real. That's all we've been taught that's real by the mind of the European. And Christianity is great with the European until it's inconvenient. It's inconvenient when when you talk about a disgusting a um, man with a reprobate mind has no morals, has no regard for anything that has boundaries, and they still support him. And yet, you whisper about Obama or Biden around white folk, and they talk loud about their Christian beliefs and how much of a Christian they are, and, and Donald Trump. Is a man of God. Why? Because Donald Trump's attitude is no different than Charles Colcock Jones. He sees people of color the same way that uh, fundamentalist Christians, Catholics, and all other European religions see us. So therefore, voodoo has to be bad. If it were not for voodoo, Haiti would not have been liberated. I suggest 
I suggest very strongly that every one of you, because I know you have a phone, every one of you go Google voodoo and see what it means. Do not go to a Christian site. See what voodoo is. You would not go to a Christian site to see what voodoo is any more than you would go to a Christian site to see what Christmas is and where it came from. Look at the history of voodoo as you would look at the history and the origin of Christianity. Questions coming. Barbara, I would pause it. Go ahead. I would say that uh, that Donald Trump is a man of God. He's a man of their God, Absolutely. God they created. So that's why the, it's so easy for it, that to flow from their tongue. Mm-hmm. But that's exactly what they believe. Yes, you're right. You're absolutely yeah. right. I see that. Anyone else? Oh, by the way, thank you. If anyone sees anything that is an addendum to what we've been talking about or that can make it clearer or something that I missed as I missed this man of God thing when Barbara cleared it up, that that's the kind of input we also welcome just like we do questions, okay? Ron? Questions or comments, y'all? Where are we? Are we clear? Is everybody uh, comfortable, or do you have any questions or concerns about what we've spoken about Christianity? Part of the discussion today, whether we realize it or not, is is showing us as standing in the gap, the here and now. And the discussion on Christianity has gone on for a couple of weeks, which is beautiful to me because it brings clarity and it shows you just what a grip that it has had on us, that, that, that falsehood has had on us, which means that it has that same grip in the earth. And as we discuss it, it is a freeing, it is a, a releasing of all, uh, uh, bringing enlightenment to th- that concept and bringing truth to it and shedding light and all those things are true now. So uh, if you feel free, if you feel released, uh, that's what we have uh, re- released in the earth and the atmosphere. And that's that's good. That's that's why we we keep visiting this. So, are we good with that? Are we good with our understanding of Christianity? Do we see the uh, the tie-in with religion and 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 slavery and and uh, holding people in place and uh, where we are today? So, uh, the the other thing, I'm sorry, someone saying something. I'm sorry, Ron. I am. I, I think I have a far better understanding. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Something else, Pastor said that I think is extremely powerful. Uh, that I, I just want to mention again, uh, it, 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 the things that have happened in the earth that have happened for, for years and centuries, and I've even in my meditations, in my prayers, have said, I would like, I hope to see some of these things happen in my lifetime, you know, and and I, I, to look at this. And, and as many times we've talked about it, but to see it now, uh, the way it was explained today, the spiritual concept of it, when we when we looked at the East, the, the recognize the here and now, and recognize that we are not 
bound by time. We're not following time. It's a freeing kind of thing. It releases weights. And so the concepts, uh, the, the love and the harmony and, and, and the peace and the forgiveness, those remain our focus. And we, we see those and, and we, 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 we see that now through the eye, the eye, the eye of, of uh, be still and know. Be still and know that I am. Be still and know that I am. So uh, that that is a freeing kind of thing, and I I, uh, I, I appreciate that. So I I, I think we uh, I hope we are in a a, a a very good place now, and uh, we 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 breathe and we open ourselves for uh, to see what else it is to see and where we go from here, what we do. So question the comments. What 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 are you guys what are you guys seeing? What did you where are we? Anybody? Yeah, good afternoon, Ron. Um, this is George. Hey, George. Uh, I just, you know, want to say that, you know, I am in a great place in the now, right now. And just being able to hear what I've heard through my third ear, you know, was just a blessing to have the freedom to know how wonderfully and marvelously we are made. And when you refer to the I am, I'll just say this again, because it's just part of just an affirmation for me, is I am because we are. And we are because they were. And since they were, therefore I am. And so if I am has sent us, you know, then we're not only coming into an awareness and understanding of consciousness in terms of self-consciousness, but I think that we're actually tapping into the cosmic consciousness of being in unicity with the universe, in unicity, you know, with the creator. And so we are the creators. And it's just, you know, an awesome time to be in because we're clearing the clutter. You know, when Pastor mentioned earlier about prayer and meditation, and, you know, I think we've talked about this or mentioned it in the past that we talk about Shalu. And we understand and come to know that basically prayer and meditation is, is the same thing. But when we're able to tap into the power within the I am consciousness that we are, you know, then we're able to, you know, create our desires by being in oneness. And so, again, it's just awesome to be able to, you know, just bear witness to that which we're experiencing in the now, because yeah. now is the time, Ron. So I just wanted to share that. I'm just so grateful, you know, just to, um, you know, tap into the power that we all are experiencing. Thank you for letting me share that. Thank you, George. Appreciate you sharing. I, just, just, just one word. Uh, refresh my memory. Shalu again. R go back and... and uh, that, that term. Yeah, well, you know, it's an Aramaic term um, that basically talks about the importance of clearing the clutter. There's so much that come at us that we see with our eyes, that we hear with our ears, but the discernment of just being able to, as you, you mentioned earlier, being still and knowing that I am Elohim, you know, then, you know, we're able to shed that which has entertain us, overwhelmed us in terms of the way of the world and the way that we see things in our, you know, with our eyes, but we're tapping into um, a deeper desire you know, to know that we can live in this, but we don't have to be of it in that sense, Ron, where there's that clutter. And I think that over a period of time in our coming together as we are, I think that we're um, where we are letting go or where we are shedding the clutter and we're coming into a spiritual awareness that just, again, goes beyond what we have missed only because of the religion and the teachings, you know, from that standpoint of knowing our true self. And, you know, I mean, we can look at it in various ways. And I mean, it's the same thing with Guru or we talk about herbs. 
you know, why are so many people going over to Africa now wanting to understand the herbs and agriculture, you know, when, you know, again, uh, there, it's a reason that they're going over. And I think that we're getting so, you know, blessed, you know, with just our, who we are and who we were created to be. So what, again, shalu is just an Aramaic term, you know, that speaks about, you know, again, meditation, but clearing space, I guess, you know, is what it's saying. Clear that space. Get rid of that stuff that is occupying your mind and, and, and let the love of who you are, let balance, unity, and all of the things that, you know, we, you know, everyone has shared over the period of time when we talked about Christianity. And I know that, you know, freeing ourselves from religion um, has definitely uh, impacted on my, 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 my peace, you know, my understanding and my, my, my continued spiritual journey. And I just thank you all, you know, just for being able to share the love, being able to, you know, experience the walk in the light. So that's what I see in Shalu, uh, uh, Ron, if, that, if, that, if that's helpful. No, Very that helpful. Sounds I'm no, sorry, go ahead. I'm, I'm, to, that sounds similar to getting rid of the distraction, not paying attention to yes. anything that would, would take your mind off of and take your focus off of the truth of the, whatever the situation uh, is. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, as you were, were talking, I, I was thinking, uh, be still and know that I am. Uh, that, that no is talking about those experiences. You know, when all else fails, clearing the clutter is I, I have experiences with the creator. I, I have experiences at, at uh, 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 my, I almost said higher self, but with my, within my soul. I, I, I see the deeper me. I, I see that. And, and when you reach that point, and as, as has been said, we are in the present, in the here and now. That is a, the connection, the, the, the clearing of that clutter uh, is, is the ancestors. The ancestors are now, and those experiences are all yours. And, and uh, so, yeah, you, you, you are clearing space. You are getting rid of the distractions. You are uh, clearing the clutter and all the other noise that is there. That's, that's so beautifully said. And, and yeah, that, that does help to bring clarity. Anyone else? Anyone else? I read some. Oh, uh, I can find it. Yeah, I, I was reading from a book called The, the Hidden Gospel, and I was look. I started off looking at universe, and led me to looking at uh, just going down a rabbit hole. I end up to holy, and it says for holy to become holy in an Aramic sense that means to create space, but to create separate space for ever whatever becomes the pivot in our lives, the axis on which the universe turns. In this way, we clearly we, we clarify the essence of our being so that we can find our unique place in the cosmic unity. So whatever you're concentrating on, whatever that thing that causes you to pivot, that thing that causes you to create space, and as we talk about here, the understanding of, of, of truth, the understanding of love and, and harmony, the understanding of, of our souls and who we are. And, and as we discussed on yesterday, the, the, uh, the, the, the realness, the reality of, of, of putting our uh, soul above our, uh, what's the word? Uh, let, letting our, our, our soul be the, the, the driving force of who we are. Uh, 
So all of this is real. And as we grow, we grow the universe. We, we, we grow an understanding in the universe. We grow the enlightenment that we are. So, yeah, I, I, I like this. I think we're in a very, very good place. But anyone else, any, anyone else want to share? Okay. Well, any other questions or comments on any topic? Well, I don't think we ever stop. We don't ever end, but we do take pauses. Maybe, maybe this is a good opportunity for a pause uh, to reflect on, to ponder, to meditate. So maybe we can stop here for now. Hope this has all made sense to us. Uh, and again, if not, we will pick up where your questions lead us on the next time. So are there uh, anything else to bring, come to our attention? If not, I bid you a good afternoon and hope that everyone enjoys the rest of the day. Thank you, Ron. Thank you. Juan. Thank you, Ron. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ron.